Welcome to part three in the Introduction to Hemostasis and Coagulation series. I am Kathleen Wong and I am a hematopathologist at the University of Alberta Hospital in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This slide outlines the three primary objectives of the series of sessions. Previously in part one, we defined normal hemostasis and described primary hemostasis as the interaction between the blood vessel's subendothelial collagen layer, platelets, and von Willebrand factor. In part two, we explored how secondary hemostasis is triggered by tissue injury that activates the extrinsic pathway and common pathway to generate an initial burst of thrombin, which then activates the intrinsic pathway in order to propagate additional thrombin generation and clot formation. We conclude part two by emphasizing that normal blood calcium concentration, pH and temperature are essential to overall hemostasis and coagulation. Now we're ready to move on to part three laboratory evaluation of secondary hemostasis. As we discussed previously, the partial thromboplastin time or PTT test shown in blue on the slide measures the time to clot formation from the beginning of the intrinsic pathway at factor 12 through to the conclusion of the common pathway with the formation of the fibrin clot. On the other hand, the prothrombin time or PT test measures the time to clot formation from the beginning of the extrinsic pathway shown in pink at factor 7 through to the formation of fibrin clot at the end of the common pathway. Therefore, the intrinsic pathway factors 12, 11, 9, and 8 are assessed by the PTT test, while the extrinsic pathway, i.e. factor 7, is assessed by the PT test. The common pathway factors, though, 10, 5, 2 and 1 are assessed by interpreting the PTT and PT tests together in conjunction. To measure the PTT and PT, we draw the patient's blood into a tube containing sodium citrate, also known as the blue top tube. The time to clot formation is measured in seconds. In the PTT test, we add back calcium, phospholipid, and a negatively charged surface activator such as kaolin, which directly activates factor 12 in the patient's plasma in the test cuvette. This forces coagulation to proceed down the intrinsic pathway preferentially in the testing environment. The time to convert liquid plasma into solid plasma is measured in seconds and the result is reported as the PTT. Therefore, a normal PTT result means a normal intrinsic pathway and that means normal factors 12, 11, 9, and 8 level and function. In the prothrombin time or PT test shown in pink on this slide, we add back calcium and phospholipid to the patient's plasma again, but this time we add tissue factor to the sample instead. This forces coagulation in the test cuvette to proceed down the extrinsic pathway by directly activating the patient's factor 7. The time to convert liquid plasma to solid plasma is measured in seconds and is reported as the prothrombin time or PT. The PT in seconds is also converted to a ratio called the INR, or International Normalization Ratio. The PT and INR results are always reported together. A normal PT and INR result means a normal extrinsic pathway, and that means normal factor 7 level and function. This slide illustrates how the patient's blood specimen is collected and processed to measure the PTT and PT. The patient's blood is first drawn into the blue top tube which contains sodium citrate so that the blood will remain in liquid form for analysis. Once the tube arrives in the lab, it is centrifuged to separate out the red cell, white cell and platelet, and plasma layers from one another. The automated analyzer then aspirates a portion of the patient's straw yellow plasma layer to analyze the PTT and PT. In the PTT test, we take advantage of the activation of factor 12 when we add back calcium, phospholipid, and specifically the negatively charged surface activator that forces coagulation to proceed down the intrinsic pathway. In the PT test shown in pink, we add back calcium and phospholipid again, but this time we add tissue factor to force coagulation to proceed down the extrinsic pathway instead. Either way, the end result is that the common pathway is activated in both the PT and PTT test to convert liquid plasma into the solid state. The time to clot formation is measured by the analyzer's internal timer and the timer will stop 
as soon as the liquid plasma is solidified. Therefore, the common pathway factors are assessed by the PTINR and PTT tests together. It is important to realize that there is a normal process called fibrinolysis that will break down the blood clot in time once the blood vessel injury site is repaired. If the clot is broken down or lysed too fast, then there is hyperfibrinolysis, and that means the patient will bleed despite having normal primary and secondary hemostasis. The coagulation analyzer stops its internal timer as soon as the plasma in the test cuvette solidifies. Therefore, the PTINR and PTT tests do not measure fibrinolysis pathway function at all. Laboratory tests of fibrinolysis include measuring fibrinogen and D-dimers. Hereditary disorders of fibrinolysis are extremely rare, so other specialized tests are referred to reference laboratories for testing, and these are not routinely available in the coagulation lab. This concludes Part 3 on the laboratory evaluation of hemostasis and fibrinolysis. This final slide summarizes hemostasis by reviewing the definitions and key components of normal hemostasis, primary hemostasis, and secondary hemostasis. Remember again that normal blood calcium concentration, pH, and temperature are essential to all of hemostasis and coagulation. I thank you for your attention.